Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today we're going to see if a $100 graphics card can run VR. Yes, we're going to see if we can break the stereotype of that you need a super expensive graphics card to run VR. Let's find out. Have you ever been in a situation where you've got a brand new gaming PC but you're running an unactivated version of Windows on it and you've got that annoying watermark at the bottom right of your screen saying activate Windows and you want to remove that thing once and for all? then I'd consider checking out scdkey.com for activating your next gaming PC. They're an online vendor selling tons of different Windows keys such as Windows 10 Pro and activating your computer could not be quicker. All it takes is just adding the item to your cart such as Windows 10 Pro, checking it out using your preferred method of purchase like PayPal for me, and then getting the key that it provides you and activating your computer using the Windows 10 activation box. I've personally used SED key at least five times for past budget builds, so so far my experience with them has been positive. So SED key is reaching out to you guys and is providing a discount code called SK Scatter, where you can get a percentage off of your next purchase from their website. So if you want to check them out, check the top of the description below. So this video here is a follow-up to my original Canon $100 graphics card run VR video that I put all the way out back in 2017 for the original Oculus Rift. And it's been two years and there's been much changes in the world of VR, so I think it'd be really cool to touch up on that subject again, but with the brand new Oculus Rift S. However, there's an issue. Right now in the year 2019, GTX 1050s are being produced brand new for a hundred bucks, like what they used to. And of course, the new GTX 1650 you can find for less than $150. So that really narrows our playing field of graphics cards to one choice. Truly one of the last bastions of super budget graphics cards that you can buy brand new for about $100, the RX 560. So we're gonna see if this nice looking graphics card that I got for 100 bucks can run VR. Anyways, if you enjoy VR gaming content like this, then definitely subscribe to the Scatterable channel. We got more of that stuff coming up. And again, if you want to help out this video in the algorithm, then be sure to give it a like. So let's talk about the graphics card. I chose the Asus ROG Strix RX 560. This has 16 compute units, four gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM, and I got it for about $110 used. Now there's a reason why I think the RX 560 in particular does stand a chance when it comes to budget VR gaming. And especially when you compare it to the previous 1050 that I used in my original video, there are some advancements that might be appealing to newer games nowadays in 2019, especially in VR. So I'm putting all my bets, first of all, on the four gigabytes of VRAM that the RX 560 offers AMD's Liquid VR technology and that it has about a $110 price tag on Amazon and Newegg. So it's a little bit above a hundred bucks, but truly, especially considering the market right now, it's actually a very budget price. So really it's like the only card we can really use besides an RX 550, which that thing is gonna absolutely not do well. So how is this card gonna affect the minimum specs of VR? Well, if we look at the minimum specs, the minimum graphics cards we can get are the RX 470 or GTX 970. And if you look at our RX 560, that is definitely slower than a 470, but there are similar characteristics. The 560, like I said, has a lot of VRAM, but unlike the 470, it has a much higher clock speed and a lower TDP, which means we could overclock this 560 even more if we had to. Now, there is a reason why I want to really make sure that we have a solid choice for this challenge, because we need to make sure that we meet the needs of reprojection when it comes to VR gaming. Reprojecting is just the need that we need to have a stable frame rate when it comes to gaming in VR of any sort, because having a variable frame rate in VR can potentially cause nausea and other uncomfortable experiences. So it's crucial that you have a powerful enough card to hold a stable frame rate. And with the Oculus Rift S, its panel is rated at a refresh rate of 80 hertz. So the ideal FPS to target with this new graphics card on all games would be 80 frames per second. And if it can't meet that requirement, then due to reprojection, it'll drop down to a lower frame rate that is more stable, like 40 frames per second. So if all this into account, I went ahead and started testing the RX 560 and some VR titles. So I went ahead and booted up Onward and the game was running all right until it crashed. And then I went ahead and booted up Contractors and it was doing all right for a minute and then it crashed. And then of course my favorite new VR game, Blade and Sorcery, and then it crashed. But Dirt f didn't crash, which is surprising. But what could I tell from these first benchmarks? The card was not handling these games well at the suggested applied settings. 
So I wanted to make sure that I made this video possible. So I went one step further with the 560 to ensure I can get you guys some good benchmarks. So I went ahead and went into the game settings of each of those VR games and I lowered them to their minimum spec and from there worked my way up on getting an optimal setting at a stable frame rate. And to add on to that, I went ahead and overclocked the RX 560 to a higher clock speed and memory clock speed to ensure that we have at least some sort of playable VR experience and here's what I got. Checking out Sprint Vector, I luckily got a 100% render resolution, 2 times anti-aliasing, and graphics set to medium to low. And luckily for a game that is all about speed and constant motion, there was no lag, and there was no hiccups on the graphics end, and luckily I didn't experience any nausea or out of place movement. So that was good to see that it handled Sprint Vector. But now what about Blade and Sorcery? This game totally crashed within the first minute of using the 560, and so what I got to was a 0.75 times render resolution at low settings. So as you can see from the gameplay, it's smooth, it's got a high frame rate, and it has little to no drop frames, but again, compared to the Vega 56, there is a quality difference. Next up is Contractors. This one kind of took the hardest hit, I'd say, on the 560 in terms of optimizing it for VR. It's at low resolution, medium anti-aliasing, and high to ultra graphic settings. So the anti-aliasing was totally horrid, which was terrible for aiming for targets. So I would not recommend running Contractors, which is one of the most visually nice games on VR on the 560, especially when compared to the 56, as you can see. And finally, one of my last and most favorite VR games onward, I was able to get lowest settings at medium textures. And now the rendering quality itself wasn't terrible, but the frame rate was definitely half to about 40 frames per second, which made it smooth, but you know, not at that silky smooth 80 frames per second that you want on the Rift S. And also due to that low quality, aiming targets, especially far into the distance, was a little bit of a hassle. So I'd say for the RX 560, when it came to playing first person titles that were shooters, it didn't hold up that well, but for other titles like Sprint Vector, Rec Room, and even Blade and Sorcery, I think did an okay job. So concluding from these results, could you play VR on a $100 graphics card? My personal take, no. <laughs> no, unless you want a subpar experience on non-FPS games, I would not recommend it. And this is kind of contrary to what I said in 2017 because that was on a GTX 1050 and the grade of games that I was testing back then was much easier than what we have right now in 2019. All I had back then was Super Hot, Robo Recall, and that was pretty much it. However, nowadays we have Contractors, Sprint Vector, Blade and Sorcery, and even the upcoming Stormland, which is a fantastic looking VR game coming out to the Oculus Rift S, and we wanna have you know a good experience on all those really nice looking games, and the 560 just doesn't have enough firepower to tackle on all those games. Now at the same time, I think it was kinda of grasping at a few of those lower end titles, so I really think if you went with an RX 570 or GTX 1060, you could definitely have a playable VR experience for only about $50 more with a $150 graphics card. So in the end, don't get a $100 graphics card for VR gaming unless you're doing really basic games. I would definitely spend the extra $50 on a more powerful graphics card. Anyways, that is it that we have for today's video. Big thank you again to Oculus for sending out the Oculus Rift S. And if you like this VR content, again, feel free to subscribe and definitely give the video a like if you enjoyed it. But anyways, that is it for today's video. And this is the Scatterville channel, signing out.